guess you might say. Yeah. Uh, so let's go ahead and move forward and let's talk a little bit about the portfolio strategy update. So what have we done so far and what will we be doing? So when you're looking at this chart, you know, fundamentals matter more than the political control. So when you're looking at the way this chart is structured, on the left-hand side, you've got rates of return. And on the lower axis, you have a bunch of letters and numbers, right? What do they represent? It represents the political parties who are in control. It's the presidency, the Senate, and the House. Now, how does that correlate with how the returns were in the market during the times that those parties were actually in power? Well, that's where you look at the green bar. So the first green bar on the left is 10.3%. So while Democrats had full control within those 22 different years, the average rate of return was 10.3%. And then when the Republicans and the Democrats were in, in other words, a Democrat in the presidency, Republicans in the Senate and the House, it was up 14.6%. Then you look at the third bar there, you had Democrat, Democrat, and Republican, and it was up 16.8%. And really, it kind of goes through this whole process, what it, and what it tells you is it's not so much the political control as it is the fundamentals of the market. Again, we're, we're not trying to get out because one party's in or another party's in, but when it comes to the midterms, we do have to be mindful of historical data, and, and that is that it rises after a midterm because what happens? There's certainty now. People know who's going to be in control and they have an idea of the direction that they're going to go. And one thing the market likes, Rocky, is certainty. Doesn't like uncertainty. Uh, so before the election, you saw a lot of volatility. After the election, you're seeing a rise up in the markets. That brings us to where are we with our portfolio strategies relative to the stock market? And when I say stock market, I'm really looking at the S&P 500. That's the, that's the main focus we look at because it's large cap stocks, 500 of them. It's not the Dow where you get the 30 top stocks. It's a, a much broader uh, index. This chart shows how we've been in a roller coaster ride since the beginning of the year, you know, up and down, up and down, up and down, all the way in a lower downward bias. Uh, so when we got to a certain point in the stock market, we started moving to cash again because there wasn't any other place to go at the time. Bonds weren't really an option. Uh, so we, we increased the positions in our cash, and we did that twice. We did about 10% relative to the higher risk portfolios, and then the second time, another 15% in all portfolios. We were looking at when do we get back in, and it was really relative to whether we hit the bottom in the stock market or are we bumping up against the midterms. We don't believe we've hit the bottom yet. There's, we, we think that there's still some room for it to drop, but we did run up against midterms. So what did we do? We went all back into the portfolios on the 4th and the 7th of this month before the elections. And as you can see, right around when we went in after the elections had come to pass, and you saw the market rising back up again. Uh, this chart takes you to Tuesday, I believe. We still have some more strategies in our, in our quiver because at the end of the day, we don't think this volatility is over. Now, let's look specifically to the actions that we've taken so far and what we could possibly be doing in the future. And this really comes down to what is the market doing? Uh, what are the economic indicators telling us? Some of the options that we have is we could again reduce equity positions in the portfolios by 10 to 15 percent. We can reduce EM uh, emerging market Asia to zero. That might, might end up happening, you know, when you're talking about value stocks and growth stocks. Uh, right now, we're, we're pretty heavily in value stocks. Uh, but if we do hit that turnaround, the growth stocks are going to be performing better. So we'll be watching that. 
The other option here is we could be adding a gold silver to the portfolio as a bit of a hedge. Um, going again to fixed income, we could be adding a laddered treasury portfolio. This would be a short term portfolio, one to one and a half years. Uh, we could also change the duration and the sector exposure again relative to the fixed income. So we're kind of keeping an eye on the different sectors, asset classes to see which ones uh, are really working themselves into that mode of moving forward. And then again, from a cash bond alternative standpoint, we could certainly be looking at increasing cash positions down the road again. However, I don't think it's going to be anywhere near as what we did earlier this year.